Imagine trying to land on a planet with temperatures hot enough to melt lead and atmospheric pressure crushing enough to crush a submarine. Well, that's exactly what the Soviet Union did when they landed on Venus. In this video, we're going to explore how the Soviet Union achieved this amazing feat. Welcome to the Seeker's Edge, where we seek knowledge that'll give you an edge in life. Let's begin. The Soviet Union's Venera missions to Venus have fascinated scientists and space enthusiasts for decades. These missions represent an impressive feat of engineering and space exploration that paved the way for future exploration of our solar system. The Venera missions were a series of unmanned spacecraft sent by the Soviet Union to explore Venus, the second planet from the Sun. Between 1961 and 1984, the Soviet Union launched 16 missions to Venus, with 10 of these missions successfully landing on the planet's surface. The Venera missions were instrumental in advancing our understanding of Venus, and it helped to lay the foundation for future exploration of the planet. One of the reasons why the Venera missions continue to captivate people's imaginations is the challenging nature of exploring Venus. Venus is an inhospitable planet with a thick atmosphere composed primarily of carbon dioxide, sulfuric acid clouds, and temperatures that can reach up to 864 degrees Fahrenheit. The harsh conditions on the planet's surface make it extremely difficult for spacecraft to survive, let alone transmit data back to Earth. Despite these daunting challenges, the engineers and scientists behind the Venera missions persevered and developed innovative technologies to ensure the success of the missions. These technologies included high-temperature-resistant materials, specialized instruments for measuring atmospheric and surface conditions, and robust communication systems that could withstand the harsh environment. But before we explore how the Soviet Union managed this with ancient technology from the 1960s, let's first dive deeper into the planet of Venus. How does Venus compare to Earth? Venus, the second planet from the Sun, is often referred to as Earth's evil twin due to the many similarities it shares with our planet. However, despite the similarities, Venus is a hostile and uninhabitable planet. Both Venus and Earth are terrestrial planets, meaning that they have a solid surface, unlike the gas giants of our solar system. Venus is similar to Earth in terms of size and composition, and it's the closest planet to us in terms of distance. However, while Earth has a moderate and habitable climate, as you may have noticed, I don't know, the atmospheric pressure on Venus is 90 times greater than Earth's. But 864 degrees Fahrenheit would make it the hottest planet in our solar system. These extreme conditions make Venus one of the most challenging planets to study, explore, and understand. Despite these challenges, the Soviet Union's Venera missions managed to send probes to the surface of Venus, providing valuable insights into the planet's geology and atmospheric conditions. The Soviet Union's Venera program began in the early 1960s with the aim of exploring the planet Venus. However, the early missions were plagued by failures with several probes failing to reach Venus or malfunctioning before they could transmit any data. The first successful mission was Venera 4, which launched on June 12, 1967. The probe consisted of a spherical descent module, which carried instruments to measure temperature, pressure, and the composition of the Venusian atmosphere. On October 18, 1967, Venera 4 entered Venus's atmosphere and began its descent. It was the first spacecraft to enter the atmosphere of another planet and then transmit data back to Earth. The data collected by the Venera 4 provided the first measurements of the temperature, pressure, and composition of the Venusian atmosphere. Although Venera 4's parachute failed to fully deploy, causing the probe to crash land on the surface of Venus, the mission was still considered a success. The data collected by Venera 4 provided valuable information for future missions, and helped scientists better understand the challenges of exploring the harsh environment of Venus. As the Venera missions progressed, scientists and engineers realized that Venus was far more hostile than they had anticipated. The planet's extremely thick atmosphere, with a pressure equivalent to being one kilometer underwater on Earth, made it difficult for a probe to land safely. In addition, the surface temperature of Venus is around 450 degrees Celsius, which is hot enough to melt lead. These factors posed a significant engineering challenge for the Venera project. To overcome these challenges, engineers worked tirelessly to develop landing probes that could withstand the harsh environments of Venus. The Venera 5 and 6 missions saw significant improvements in the design and construction of the landing probes. For example, the probes were constructed with more durable materials, such as titanium and heat-resistant ceramics. They were also equipped with a special cooling system to help the electronics from overheating. Another major improvement was the inclusion of parachutes to help slow the descent of the probes. This was a crucial addition, as the thick atmosphere of Venus would cause a probe to descend at a dangerously high speed without any means of slowing down. Overall, the intense engineering effort that went into the Venera missions was crucial to their success. Thanks to these improvements, the later Venera probes were able to collect valuable data from the surface of Venus, despite the planet's extreme conditions. After the success of Venera 4, the Soviet Union launched Venera 5 and 6 in 1969. 
Both missions were designed to perform atmospheric measurements, as well as to gather information about the planet's surface. Venera 5 and 6 consisted of a descent vehicle, which carried specific scientific instruments, and an orbiter, which relayed data back to Earth. The Venera 5 descent vehicle reached the surface of Venus on May 16, 1969, and transmitted data for just 53 minutes before its signal was lost. Similarly, Venera 6 landed on the planet's surface on May 17, 1969, and it transmitted data for only 51 minutes. Despite the short duration of these missions, the data provided valuable information about the planet's atmosphere. Both Venera 5 and 6 found that the atmosphere of Venus was composed primarily of carbon dioxide, with small amounts of nitrogen and oxygen. The atmospheric pressure at the points was also found to be much higher than anticipated, with Venera 6 recording a pressure of about 90 atmospheres. The temperature recorded by both missions were extremely high, with Venera 5 measuring a surface temperature of 455 degrees Celsius, and Venera 6 recording a temperature of up to 475 degrees Celsius. While the short mission durations of Venera 5 and 6 were disappointing, the data they provided proved invaluable for further scientific research into Venus. The similarities in their failures were likely due to the extreme environment of the planet, which put a great deal of strain on the equipment used in the missions. Even though the Soviets had invested millions into this project, the results were still lacking, but they didn't give up. The program directors of the Venera project were determined to achieve the ultimate goal of landing a probe on the Venusian surface. To achieve this goal, they implemented various measures to improve the technology and overcome the hostile environment of Venus. The Venera 7 lander was designed with significant modifications to withstand the extreme heat and pressure of Venus. The lander had a spherical shape and was constructed with heat-resistant materials. Additionally, the lander was equipped with a parachute and shock-absorbing landing lights to protect it during the descent. The Venera 7 lander faced extreme challenges during the descent, including a malfunctioning parachute and failure of its communication systems. However, the lander managed to survive the descent and landed on the Venusian surface. It transmitted data for approximately 23 minutes before intense heat and pressure caused the probe to fail. The success of the Venera 7 mission was a significant achievement for the Venera program and the Soviet Union. It proved that it was possible to land a probe on Venus despite the intense challenges posed by the hostile environment. The data collected by the Venera 7 lander provided valuable insights into the composition and conditions of the Venusian surface, which helped further our understanding of this mysterious planet. This success gave the Soviet Union a boost in morale as they continued their journey to Venus. After the success of Venera 7, the Soviet Union continued to send missions to Venus with the goals of further studying its atmosphere and surface. Venera 8 and 9, launched in 1972 and 1975 respectively, successfully landed on the surface of Venus and transmitted back data to Earth. Venera 8 was designed to operate for only 50 minutes, but managed to survive for a little over two hours. Its instruments measured the temperature, pressure, and composition of the Venusian atmosphere, and the images it took of the surface revealed a rocky, desolate landscape. Venera 9, on the other hand, was equipped with a camera that captured the first ever images of the Venusian surface. These images showed a rocky, barren terrain with scattered boulders and a reddish-orange sky. Subsequent missions, including Venera 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14, continued to provide valuable data on the Venusian atmosphere and surface. The missions measured the temperature, pressure, and composition of the atmosphere, as well as the characteristics on the surface, like the presence of rocks and the texture of the terrain. The data collected by the Venera missions contributes greatly to our understanding of Venus and helps us to develop more accurate models of its geology and climate. Overall, the Venera missions were a major achievement in space exploration, and they continue to inspire and inform current and future scientific missions to Venus. To conclude, the Soviet Union's Venera missions to Venus were a remarkable achievement that pushed the boundaries of space exploration and engineering. The data collected by these missions has greatly expanded our understanding of Venus and provided valuable insights into the challenges of exploring other planets. The Venera program continues to inspire space enthusiasts and engineers to this day, and its legacy will undoubtedly continue to shape our understanding of the universe for generations to come. And that's it for today. So if you like this video, please subscribe to The Seeker's Edge. And if you didn't, well, that hurts my feelings. Anyways, I'll see you next time.